there's a misconception about bees. They think bees are monsters. When they see us, wow, they must come and sting us and harm us, all right? And that's a misconception. Hello, I'm John Chong. I'm a beekeeper in Singapore. Right now, at my new uh, operating center at the Singapore Institute of Social Sciences, I have the local honeybees, the Apis serrana. Bees, that basically, they want to survive. Bees are more interested in collecting nectar and pollen for their own brood, for their own survival. Bees only sting when we want to harvest the honey, when we provoke them, when we want to cut the honeycombs, when we harvest honey. But how many of us in Singapore we go around every day uh, at a daily task, go around harvesting honey, very unlikely. Bees are responsible for one third of our food sources. Imagine that if, if without bees, uh, just through pollination, one third of our food sources will be gone. No doubt Singapore is not an agricultural country, all right? But we need food as well. As Singapore, we benefited from the pollination uh, of bees in other countries. That's why we have food sources from all over the world. There's no lack of food. We need to advocate the, for the importance of the bees, not just to conserve and to multiply, because in some areas, bee populations are on the decline. So we need to send a message to Singaporeans and the people from all over the world to look after the welfare of, of the bees and actually to multiply them. A lot of my visitors, they come in, uh, they're students or even adults. Uh, they come with this fear of bees. The bees are going to harm them. And some of them are so fearful, all right? But after uh, my encouraging, after encouraging them, after demonstrating to them, and after uh, they had a personal encounter with these bees by taking photographs with the bees, and it gave me so much satisfaction to see the faces filled with uh, glow and confidence. Wow! They say, now I'm no longer afraid of bees. Uh, so that's so satisfying. In terms of beekeeping, the major challenge is our bees don't have enough nectar. Even the place I have right, is limited. And then if you want to grow, uh, the bees need a lot of flowers in great intensity and concentration. If you look at every flower, the flower contains only very tiny little pollen and little tiny little nectar. But the bees don't complain. They will just go and get this nectar. And then once they collect this nectar, they will so-called value add to the nectar and change it into honey. And then once they, uh, once they value add to it, they, they, they also multiply it. So I think for, for, for me personally, I also want my own children to cherish whatever little they have and then to add value to whatever they have and then to multiply it. And then once we have enough, we can share. So as an educator, we always want our students or as a parent, we want our, our own children to be hardworking, to be productive. And all these values, I find that we, I can use bees as a, uh, to teach and to encourage my students or my own children to become as productive, as hardworking as the bees. Bees in uh, whatever places uh, that we can uh, do so safely without causing alarm to anybody. So, uh, although this is a, a small start, hopefully every garden, every rooftop in Singapore will have a colony of bees. And my mission is to make Singapore and society bee friendly. As a community, I think in order to make our society and Singapore be friendly, uh, the effort, my effort alone is not enough to make Singapore be friendly. We need a collective effort. We start everything from small, right? but I see this great future in this. And I hope to inspire, I hope to encourage the next generation. I'm already 64 years old, all right? I hope to encourage the next generation of Singaporeans who will take it further from what I do. So I may so-called lay the foundation, they will build it up from there. And I hope maybe by the time Singapore celebrates SG100, beekeeping will be our national heritage. <laughs>